I'm uh, the co-organizer of the Danish uh, meetups, and I'll be your host and moderator to, uh, today. Um, as you can see, uh, last you have uh, muted uh, all. Or I have uh, I have not. So most people have muted themselves. Okay. Um, and uh, you're uh, very welcome to uh, write uh, questions in the chat box or use the raise hand uh, when we are starting the Q and A session. And we have some few uh, questions uh, in advance that I will post in, in the group chat so you can uh, also read them uh, while the coaches uh, giving their best advice. And um, I'm really looking forward to today. And let's hear some news from uh, GTD Nordic. Uh, Morten? Yes. Um, thank you, Jens, and thank you for co-hosting this. Um, some of the news we have from the GTD Nordic, for those of you who don't follow us very closely, um, we have just launched what we call WILT, or V I L T, which is, stands for Virtual Instructor Led Training. That is our uh, full day seminars that was used to be in person, is now virtual. So if you want to have more information about this, uh, you will go to a website I will frequently uh, mention that's gtdnordic.com. You will find an information about the different virtual um, uh, seminars that we can offer you. And we are now also, what we talk about today is going to be coaching. It's going to be, you know, you can ask us anything, which is, I'm, I'm sure you have some interesting questions. And but virtual coaching now is available in uh, Finnish, Norwegian, Danish, and English at the moment. So if you uh, speak one of those languages, you can also find the information about that at gtdnordic.com at a special Corona discount price this at this moment. So if you want to um, go there and sign up, I'm sure you will find it uh, very affordable. Um, in the, if you speak Norwegian or understand Norwegian, I invite invite you for the GTD Masterclass. Uh, it's a series of free webinars. We've stolen the idea from Next Action Associates in the UK, and we have a series of free webinars in Norwegian with some interesting topics. And I'm sure that in the chat there will very soon appear a link to where you can sign up for those. Um, GTD at home, GTD information about virtual coaching. Um, uh, Q and A sessions, all for free for you that you want to to um, uh, attend to. And at last, um, for those of you who've not signed up yet or are subscribing, we have the GTD Nordic podcast, where my uh, good-looking colleague, the Dane Lars Rotskill Hendriksen, is <laughs> co-hosting this. Uh, we are co-hosting it together, and um, you will find that in a podcast um, app close to you. Search for GTD Nordic or just GTD, and you'll find this, where we walk you through the five steps of GTD in the first six episodes, and we uh, are uh, rummaging around the GTD world about the different aspects of GTD. So, and uh, of course, all for free. Anyone who's interested. Uh, go there if you'd like. That's the new section. Jansen, back to you. Yeah, thank you, Morten. Uh, I, I think that we'll uh, start uh, just uh, get to know all the Nordic coaches. Um, and I have prepared a little question for all of you. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can start with you, Morten. What's your uh, favorite part of GTD right now? Ooh, that's a very uh, good question. Favorite part would be in this Corona times is the focus, uh, the horizons of focus, which is the part of GTD not many people uh, actually know exists because we have the control uh, axis and then we have the perspective axis of GTD. Control is the five steps, capture, clarify, organize, reflect and engage. And but we have um, a way to navigate in life is called the horizons of focus. If you haven't looked at it, making it all work with David Allen, 
will uh, go in depth in this. And this is what is important for me now is that I have to recalibrate my map uh, for where I want to be sometime in the future. So that's my favorite part at the moment. Thank you, Morten. Then uh, we'll go to Lars. Uh, and what is your favorite part of GTD right now? For me, it would be a really having a complete system. Uh, things are really busy right now. It was so so strange to see how the the world turned around uh, when when the Corona times hit, and that really impacted the system. Really big use of of the uh, horizons of focus, like Morton mentioned. Um, and now things have have just picked up in a different way so a lot of stuff is going on uh, a lot of coaching going on right now both physical uh, or not much physical but but mostly virtual uh, and a, a lot of things to prepare for the new virtual course offering so having it all in 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 one system and, and getting that overview uh, to make sure that it all gets gets done in time that that complete system is just so critical for me so so I can also relax when i am done with the uh, with the day's work i think that's the favorite part for me right now Thank you, Lars. And uh, then we'll go to Finland and uh, Juka. Juka, hey, so what's, that, what's your favorite part? Um, that have, would have to be reviewing right now or reflecting. Um, I recently bought an old house and uh, that has lots of renovation to be completed. Uh, so that's one project that um, needs constant reviewing. and. Due to Corona, uh, everything else is happening virtually. So all the physical work I'm doing is at the renovation site. And that is the single most uh, important project that I, I'm working on. So reviewing that very frequently is what keeps me on track. Thanks. Thank you, Uke. And uh, last but not least, uh, Kaliva, what's your favorite part? Yeah, hello, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I think my favorite part right now is the clarify and organize step because it helps me so much to take away stress and to just calm down anything that happens and just take one thing at a time. What is this? Is this actionable? Yes or no? What's the next step? Um, and just go through all the emails to zero, all the paper and some kind of meditative just calming down and oh, this wonderful relief when it's all into the system and I can just continue then picking the most important thing knowing that uh, I'm, I'm not slipping out. So uh, yeah, I think that's at the time, it's it, because it takes away so much stress. Yeah, thank you. And uh, now it's a uh, part, uh, the part we're going to know is the uh, Q&A part. And uh, we have a few questions uh, already sent to us, and we'll start with that. And you uh, can either raise the hand or, or write a, a question. But we'll start with uh, this one, and we'll have one of the coaches uh, starts uh, answering a question, and then uh, the other three can chip in and uh, have any comments they they might have on on that so the the first one uh, is about the most important daily habits um and morton have you any uh, good idea to to this question Okay. Yes, I do. And I'm thinking that uh, if you go back to um, to the because this question has a lot of elaboration, I'm capturing, clarifying, and organizing a ton of stuff in my GTD system, which kind of, um, uh, uh, but if the daily habit you need to establish one thing you have to establish, if you don't have all the other questions there is to empty your head, just start dumping everything on a piece of paper or in your system. Uh, or just a list somewhere that you can see it later. That's that what's got me started. But 
this um, uh, apparently has um, some more depth to it. Like I'm already capturing clear, fine, organized, and tough, ton of my stuff into my GTD system, but I failed to get to the fifth step, doing or engaging as we call it now. Instead, I, I stay busy with those fires and other emergencies, deadlines, etc. Then, Then what I suggest that uh, you do if you are in this situation is that um, put aside you know because people are in fires is my first uh, idea would be uh, turn off notifications of email so you don't get drawn dragged into that in the morning so that you are able to focus on what's most important for you so just turn off notification uh, of outlook or whatever program you use so we're not um, um, have that as a, as a problem for you and then um, um, put aside time in your calendar block time out to do instead of setting you know just make some um, uh, you know if you have two hours uh, tomorrow just put in in your calendar two hours for engaging with my system and then just pick from your list at the top that will be my hottest tip at the moment so and I hand it off to the next whoever that is and, and Jens knows this. Well, I can maybe jump jump in unless I'm screwing up any any specific ordering that you have have planned. No, no, no. Um, no just one one thought on that, and I see that uh, Tillman uh, is is in the chat as well, who who asked this question. Um, I would, you know, one one thing to do also is to to review whether you were actually do, doing the right things. Because it could be that you have your GTD system, it's giving you the overview, uh, and if they are indeed fires, the things that are showing up, then I, I I'm fine with, uh, you know, saying that it might be the right things to do. So so figuring out if if those handling those interruptions are actually the right things to do, it it could it could be that it's actually not a wrong thing. It could be that if the house is on fire, I don't want you to capture, clarify, and organize that. Uh, you need to get out the building or, or deal with it in some way. So so. Um, it, it can be, be the right thing to do. I actually think, uh, Jens, you mentioned this at one, one point in a meetup in Copenhagen that you had at one point felt like you didn't get any work done because you were just dealing with all the, the, the incoming uh, crises and fires. Uh, and really, upon reflecting on that, uh, came to the conclusion that you were actually doing the right things. So, so it, uh, it might not be wrong. Uh, but certainly, like Morten said, maybe set aside time to, to doing uh, and really reflecting on if you're actually heading in the right direction. And, um, one thing that uh, both Lars and Morten is touching in on, and, and I, think that it, it's, I think it's very important to have in the back of our heads while going through uh, the day when it's a lot of things going on, a lot of firefighting, and it's, uh, and it's very important to have the threefold nature of work as some some kind of compass in the back of your head just be aware that a part of your work is to define your work it's to clarify and organize your work and a part of your work is to do your predefined work which is which is working off your list and working off your calendar and a part of your work will be to do unplanned stuff things showing up at the moment but then it's important that you, you review this, those things that show up in the moment towards your lists and then make a decision, okay, this is actually the most important thing. Because the whole uh, idea here is to go through your day with this wonderful feeling about what I'm doing now is the most important thing I can do. So, and be aware that on this threefold nature of work it's not necessarily one third clarifying and one third working off your list and one third unplanned stuff it depends on how your uh, work is and it depends on uh, so so for some of us it's like um small third clarifying and organizing and for other ones it's a bigger third so so but if you've been working we've been clarifying and organizing the whole morning then and still you have stuff in your inbox maybe it, it at the same time might be smart to go over and work off your list a little bit so um yeah i actually would uh uh emphasize something carly was said and and that is actually the clarifying part uh because uh if i coach people or if we are in training the 
single trait that I see people usually missing if they if they've been using GTD for a time or they are uh, brand new to GTD. Most people have the habit of writing things down, and most people actually park uh, their to do somewhere. But uh, more often than not, the stuff people park somewhere is somewhat um, squishy. It's it's not uh, crystal clear what the actions are, and therefore I I usually would emphasize clarifying as a separate step and really really to uh, focus on the clarifying and making sure that there is uh, dedicated clarifying time built into each day so that what gets into the lists and what gets into the calendar is crystal clear when it's time to do something about those things. Thanks. Yeah, and uh, Silman, uh, I can unmute you now. I hope. Yeah. You can. Uh, do you have any follow-up questions? Hello? Okay. Uh, then we go to the next question. And uh, that's uh, from uh, Pegida. And I'll unmute you, Pegida. Yes, it's because uh, some projects have a non-negotiable deadline and multiple actions to be done in time to meet that deadline. And the question for me is how, how do each of you create a better visual overview to ensure that each action in the project gets started in due time to meet the final project deadline? Because usually I would use a Gantt chart to create that overview, but, but then you need to give each action in the project a start and finish date. And, and then it completely mess off my GTD system with a lot of dates. Um, so I wanted to, to hear your take on that. And as a note, I use um, Todoist. Lars, would you uh, start? <laughs> well, for me, um, a lot of this would still come back to more traditional project planning. Uh, but that may also be my, my background, uh, or due to my background of, of being a project manager uh, in some, some projects before. So I don't really, um, I would normally look at a project plan. I would leave that as is and keep that overview as, as support material for, for my projects. And then, for, for example, if I had any deliverables that I owned in that project, I would maybe transition them to my GCE system and have them as projects in there. Uh, and, and perhaps, you know, in some way, signal to me the deadlines for those deliverables. And, and then as part of the weekly review, I would pick up the project plan, make sure th that I would uh, be able to prioritize those, those tasks in, um, in my daily work. But um, you know, if uh, if you find we've we've spoken about this separately, Begidin. If you re if you find a good tool for for a very simple tool or any of you online, if you have a good simple tool for Gantt planning, uh, please do send me an email. Uh, what I've found so far, I did a bit of research. I would love to have one to actually work from the natural planning model and and organize a bit more in in the same sense. And it's uh, I. The, all the stuff I find is either too simplistic or too complex. So if you find something cool, please, uh, please do send me an email. But uh, looking forward to hearing what, uh, if any of the other coaches have any, any good thoughts on this. Okay, I'll grab the word. <laughs> I think uh, Birgit is, uh, it's, a, it's a very, very good question. Uh, and uh, and uh, I am, I'm happy I got this in advance and I thought a little bit about it today. And then I actually just came back down to, uh, it's really uh, like, you, you know, um, there's a wonderful coach in the US, she's called Meg Edwards. She learned me to, to, to think about the next action and the project plan and your desired outcome as, as the alphabet from, in the Nordics, it's from A to O, or yeah, A to O, yeah. And A is your next actions, and O is your desired outcome. Your desired outcome go on your project list, your next action, the A, not the B, not the C, but the A go on in your, your next action list. And all the rest, the B to the Ö, 
<laughs> it's your project plan. And I would, in your project plan for this project, make sure to note out the deadlines. And, and if you have to review it more often than on your weekly review, I would put a, a reminder in my calendar uh, to review this project to ensure the deadline is uh, on top. Uh, a deadline is how it should be. And so you, for this project, you have the, the, the project title on your project list, one next action, the very next action on one of your next action lists and, and the project plan that you will review as often as you need to ensure in, in order to, um, to not mess, uh, to, to, to um, keep up with the due dates. And uh, I'm looking down here because you are <laughs> to the right from me. <laughs> and uh, and, um, uh, and that, that wouldn't then mess up your DDD system. You could, for instance, if you, if you have, a, uh, if you have if you are like a paper wise, you could like have it in your project plan folder. Here's my, here are my project plans on paper. So uh, they just live there and I look at them as often as I need to. So. Uh, is, is this an answer to your question? Yeah? Good. Can I grab the word here and, and be a little, um, a little heretic to everything else that's been said? I, I, would, uh, I would say the following. What, how much planning do you need to do to feel comfortable about this? I think that's the key word, comfortable. And then, and um, you know, we, we do complex um, project planning when we do seminars. We have long-term goals we need to achieve, and for me, it has to do with uh, how much planning do I need to do to make to make myself myself feel comfortable and let it go outside my head. So, so maybe, um, and, and 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 in addition to this, I would say. Um, how many dates do you need in your calendar to make this happen? And then, because the reviewing process, the reflecting process, when you see your system as often as you need to, is going to give you a feeling of where you are. So let's say you have a deadline at the end of the summer, and what you need to do to, what you need to see to feel comfortable about this. And that will give you a kind of an idea of how much, how much um, planning you need to do, how much, um, milestone you know check-ins you need to do does that make sense Birgitte? good couple sorry oh, i was saying good <laughs> <laughs> yeah a couple of words um to what morton said about being comfortable i um i also um Besides doing work with GTD, I, I work as a intralogistics project coordinator, uh, which means that I, I do um, projects regarding material flow uh, in very different kinds of environments. And often I do them with software that is provided by the customer. So it means that I would have to rely on Trello on some place, uh, Jira on another place, or something else for the third place and and sometimes there are ms projects uh, files that need to be used or um, gantt charts or even just plain spreadsheets so what i um, bring to my own system from those is the are the only actionable things that i i need to see myself but in order to follow the, uh, <clears throat> if these are complex projects with lots of uh, hard deadlines, I usually create a separate calendar for the set project. So I have no pain of uh, having, I think I have eight different calendars now, uh, besides personal calendars and other work calendars. And these are just uh, a separate calendar for each project. I can click them, uh, on or off from the general view so they don't uh, clog up my calendar view. But if I want to see that separate calendar, I can look into that, that single calendar. But it's also a very simple uh, visual way to uh, block out everything else from the calendar view and just look at the project view for that calendar with all the hard deadlines 
visible there. And if I then I can uh, activate, let's say, my personal calendar and see how those dates match up there. A very easy way to visually see how the project advances. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, now we have a question from uh, Ovar. Would you like to uh, state it yourself? Yeah, I can say it. First of all, I, I am not a coach. I am just an ordinary practice of GPK and has been so for many years. Uh, and uh, the question is very simple. I, I am, I, first of all, I'm a scientist. I work together with a large group of individualists, you can say, that, uh, that are, uh, have oh, their own Lord, scientific interests. <laughs> I feel yeah. your pain working with scientists. Yeah. So, so, uh, but, the, but the question is much really general. How do you, in a work environment consisting of, let's say, 100 plus people, how do you practice GTK when nobody else do? Uh, an important uh, aspect or important part of GTK is to, for example, to delegate. Uh, when people are not uh, receptive, uh, don't, uh, people are not, uh, what do you say, are in the habit to be told what to do, or, uh, or uh, that people are very uh, disorganized in general. Uh, this is something that I am, uh, it's not a problem for me, but this is, uh, I think this is common. Because very few people actually do uh, use any uh, any uh, time or task planning. It's, it's, this is a, a very rare thing, GTK is very rare in the society. Can I um, yeah. grab this? I think it's a wonderful question, Hovai. Thank you for it. And um, I also think, uh, believe there are many of us uh, experiencing this. Um, and uh, for instance, your, your, your question about delegating, I think if you are in an environment with people, uh, I also work as a musician and, and uh, many artists have a reputation of being chaotic. I'm chaotic myself. Uh, um, and uh, many of my colleagues are definitely. And uh, I think uh, it's important, for instance, about delegate, if you delegate something to someone else, make sure to use your waiting for list very um, thoroughly. That when you, as soon as you delegate something, write it on the waiting for list and make sure to review your waiting for list as often as you need to, at least in the weekly review. And a use of agenda list for the people uh, could also be helpful for people you meet on a regular basis. Uh, you could, for instance, also put a reminder for yourself on any of the re uh, agenda lists. Also, remember to review the waiting for lists to see if there are some waiting for us for the people as well. So the more chaotic your the world around you is, the more uh, important it is that you have your shit together to use um, that kind of expression. Um, I agree. Is that yes. just an, an answer to a part of your question? Yeah. Hmm. Good idea. Yeah. Can I can I chime in there just to give you some uh, additional depth on the on this? Is that if you are in, you know, first of all, relax you can't change people you can only influence them and the best way to influence them to have your shit together as Kalivar says pardon my french but if you have your, your your shit together you're going to be an example and the use of the gtd list like the waiting for and the agenda for is gonna um, it's gonna inspire people to say well he, uh, Hobart, he's got his shit together he's never missing anything he asks all the right question and, and, and he's like the terrier that's uh, grabbed my, uh, you know, he, he bit into my, the leg of my, uh, sorry, the, 
the, the part of my one part of my leg of my pants and he's not letting go on, until he gets the answers so so first of all just be an inspiration to others and don't give up and then if they ask you what do i do well, how do you manage all this or what you got you know you got this under control and then you can then you can t tell them about getting things done and as you say initially this is a very common question we get it all at all the time so just my my two cents worth be a good example uh one thing I, I would uh, maybe add to what Morton said and, and Carly was said is that um, when you delegate stuff out, when you're waiting for something, be really specific on what you ask for so that the wording of what you are asking is precisely the task you want them to fulfill. So that uh, when, when you, when someone receives a delegated tasks from you, they do not have to think about what they are going to execute. They know exactly from the, if, if it's an email, they know exactly from the subject line that this is the task. So that when you delegate, you know what exactly what you are uh, going to get back from these people. Uh, just uh, for the sake of being very clear with the communication so that uh, you are not asking something that uh, would uh, require thinking on the part of the person who is actually an answering to your question. Okay. And just a quick, quick reply on this. This is really good. Um, you know, and, and, and the dual edge sword here, Hovad, is that if you get really good at this and you, you inspire your colleagues and they, they get to understand GTD is that instead of having because i you know, we are 18 people in the nordic region now that are, are either uh, finished certified trainers or are going to be certified trainers uh, soon uh, is that people are are very good at two minutes uh, instead of have five you know one email with five points i get five emails it will take me exactly one minute each <laughs> so so beware what you wish for my friend <laughs> So, so I I am very aware of this. Uh, so uh, I I coordinate a, a project in the European Union that is compiling uh, information on. Uh, it's actually compiling information on uh, on raw materials for uh, rechargeable batteries from a from a raw materials point of view. A quite high profile project. Uh, and uh, what I learned is that uh, if I have to ask for uh, something, make sure that it takes less than one hour or perhaps even uh, less than uh, half an hour for the person to realize the importance of the question for him to do. Since this is something he do next to some, uh, this is not, part of his job that he uh, understand the importance of the things that he has done. Get it down to something easy. Make it as simple as uh, possible, uh, but not simple. And uh, so far we have been successful with this and, uh, and supplied the European Commission with a lot of uh, information to reports and other things. That's wonderful. Okay, that was all for me, from me. We have the next question from uh, Peter about turning off these annoying Outlook event notifications. Uh, hey, maybe I can jump in on that one. Assuming we are talking about the email notifications on Windows, you would right click the Outlook icon in the taskbar at the bottom, and then you can uncheck the box to say show new desktop notification, I think yeah. is the is the term. So if that's the one you're referring to, Peter, then uh, then hopefully that will help you because yes, please do get rid of that one. <laughs> Could we just... Sorry, I just had to mute you, Hovart, because there was apparently some alien that took over your uh, microphone. Sorry, sorry about that. Kaliva, were you trying to, to say something? 
just a very short, uh, maybe we should read out the questions. Um, yeah. Uh, so people get them. Yeah. So the, 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 the question was how to turn off these uh, annoying Outlook events notifications in the lower right corner. And I see at the bottom that Peter has just mentioned that he found it. So I think we are okay. good on, on that one. Yeah. Great, Peter. <clears throat> and the, the next question is uh, uh, from Oscar, uh, a question about reading books, digital uh, ebooks, audio books. Is it good to consider them projects and uh, what are the best uh, next action list for them? Uh, maybe you can, would you like to start with that? Okay, so let me just scroll to that uh, question. Seven uh, fifteen from Oscar. Otherwise, I'm happy to to pitch in while you find it, Yuka. So, so just for me personally, um, um, these these are really just projects in the physical world that are visible for me. So, I mostly read uh, physical books. So, the project of reading a book is that the book is placed on my project list, which is the physical place where I place my books uh, in in our home. Uh, and the next action for that is where the bookmark is. So, so sometimes we actually use this as a metaphor for projects and next actions, meaning that your your projects are the book, and the next action is where the bookmark is placed. So, from a physical perspective, at least, that's uh, that's how I do it. Um, I don't know, Yuka, if you have uh, how you would do it. Um, pretty much the same way. So, uh, if it's an ebook, um, I basically read all all the ebooks that I read. I read them from the mobile phone. And I just create a widget for the set book that I'm reading at the moment so that it's in my eyes. A uh, physical book is much easier as it's actually on the nightstand usually if it's a physical book. But then um, when there are books that I'm interested in, I actually don't um, list them. For example, if they're ebook, I don't list them in, in Kindle or anything like that. I have a read review folder and uh, I just list all the books that I would like to read at some point in there and activate them when they seem to create enough mass that they will start moving. Yeah, I think, I think one of the basic principles in the GTD method is to put reminders in front of your consciousness and, and the trick is to put put the reminders where you need them where it's it's best for you to have them so i understand the question that it is how to create next actions uh, or any kind of reminder for reading books um, please, please correct me if i'm wrong um, you could of course have a project title finish the book and the next action on your anywhere list or in, on your home next action list, uh, continue reading page 33, you can. Um, I personally um, have a daily checklist where I just remind myself on uh, the book you're reading at the moment. I have one book at the moment that I read. Actually, now I reread the Getting Things Done book, but before that it was uh, Power of Habits and, and all like many books that uh, I think are very, very cool and interesting. But it's just, it's just become a daily routine for me when I exercise, I listen to Audible or, or I sometimes park the book in my read review stack in my living room or I grab the book when I go on a journey and I have it in my back backpack. Um, so, so that's the kind of reminder I put in the front of in in front of me. Like it, it my daily checklist reminds me, hey, you you want to read this book, grab it, or my read review stack. Maybe it's it lies there, and um, for me to read, like have a, the book I'm reading to create an next action project. For me personally, it's overkill. But uh, but. Few few uh, weeks ago, I realized I was getting a bit too much away from from the 
basic getting things done methodology. I was going like in personalizing my GTD too much. And then I created the project to get back to the basics of GTD. And uh, one of the important parts of this project is to reread the GTD book and take notes and really be detailed about it. So now I have a project for it actually. Yeah. So there are many different ways, just to just be creative and, and see how you create reminders for yourself on any things. And, and mm -hmm. checklists, for, by the way, is a very, very powerful way to create new reminders. So you don't have to think the same thought twice. Mm. I, I don't know if I can chime in about books because I'm a very low reader. You know that when you do um, become a, a GTD trainer, um or you're a client of us doing some kind of coaching we would very much like you to start doing what we call now it's changed the name but it's called kairos cognition it's an online test uh, that is designed to try and unravel how your brain process information the most efficiently and one of the, the, the measuring points is how do you, do you process textual information and how do you process audible um, information? And for me, the, um, I scored very low on the reader, which kind of explained a lot of my, <laughs> my, my, my school years. And uh, then we have the, the listener, the audible um, recept uh, receptacle, uh, where I scored very high, so I'm I'm an audible um, audiobooks listener, an avid one for years. I have hundreds of books in my library, and and uh, for me, I I really don't need a reminder to to listen to the book because I built a habit. Like uh, Kaliva mentioned, the power of habits, and I see people ask question where what kind of book is this? Is the Power Happy Habit by Charles Duhigg? And uh, this book uh, also tells you that it has three triggers, uh, sorry, three steps of build, building a habit. One is uh, the trigger, and then you have the habit, and then you have the reward. So for me, the, the, the trigger is I, I go into the bathroom, and I op when I go into my bathroom in the morning, I, I, I turn on my audiobook, and I, I um, sorry, the audiobook app, and I, I start listening while you know doing my morning routine with shaving, showering, and I listen to it in the bathroom. And that's how I get like 15, 20 minutes every morning of reading done, which is really good. Text is hard for me, so that's my two cents of um, idea of what you can do if you're an audiobook listener lover. So thank you. Okay, then uh, we're ready to go to the next question from uh, Mika. Half an hour ago. Uh, that's great. Uh, he's, uh, he writes, uh, first of all, uh, big thanks for the GCD Nordic podcast. I'm a huge fan and have recommended uh, it to all my colleagues as well. And his question is, what other podcast would you recommend besides the uh, obvious official David Allen uh, podcast and next action in the field of uh, GTD or productivity in general. I would. And I'm uh, waiting for any of you saying uh, the podcast on GTD connects. The podcast on GTD connect. <laughs> Um, I don't. If I should start off on this one, um, I don't have any other ones. I, I've listened to a couple of different ones. Uh, do get some good input, some good tips on these, um, but but nothing else to to really add from from my end. Uh, my other, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts, but a lot of it is uh, tech stuff. Uh, this week in tech and uh, MacBreak Weekly and all the the nerdy stuff. So so nothing in in the same category as those, but maybe. Maybe some of you other guys have some good tips on this. I am. Yeah, you can. Please go on. Yeah. So uh, I would say that in in the formative years, um, maybe in the first decade of this millennia, uh, there were some podcasts that were GTD or productivity related that I I listened to. Um, 
one was a GTD virtual study group, which I actually enjoyed immensely at the time. And um, after that, there have been few uh, productivity related uh, podcasts that I've been listening to. I'll, I'll just check for my podcatcher. Mm. Productivity cast is something uh, uh, they they speak about GTD very highly and and actually very much on the point. But other than those, there aren't that much productivity related podcasts I listen to. I, I, I just, li yeah. yeah, I just discovered uh, Uwe Nielsen here on the on the chat, and uh, I can warmly recommend his podcast for Enkle. Uh, mm. It's only in Norwegian, yeah, Norwegian, unfortunately, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So, but if you are a Norwegian speaker or, or a Norwegian understander, then um, uh, the last podcast I listened from for Enkle was the podcast about breathing. And I still do the exercise from that podcast and it helps me a lot. So thank you for that. Uwe. Yeah, uh, the next uh, question. It's about some uh, about habits uh, from from Tillman. Uh, we can try it to see if uh, you are able to to have your microphone working this time. Uh, yes. You're very low, at least on my end, uh, Tillman. <coughs> Uh, you know? uh, no, I'm sorry, but we can't hear you. <laughs> You're really, really uh, low. If you if if you go into your uh, sp speaker settings, sorry, your your, your uh, the the arrow uh, close to your mic on the on the where you see all of us, you will be able to uh, um, do audio settings and then adjust your audio settings in part volume. If you try that, we might get back to you at some point. Maybe I can pick up uh, while we try this and feel free to interrupt me, Tillman, if you get your audio to, to work. Otherwise, um, I'll pick up on the first one you noticed, which was the only daily habit that you can actually, that you all actually remember, mentioned so far, as far as I remember, was scheduling time in my calendar for engaging with my GC, GCD system. So basically, that's like doing a mini weekly review daily, right? Would, you say that that's the most important daily habit. For me, um, transitioning, Chris, because I recognize what you mentioned as something that I also needed to improve, uh, maintaining a great system, capture, clarify, organize, all the stuff was in there, um, and then just ending up chasing, uh, chasing uh, you know, the next butterfly or whatever showed up in my world. Um, so really taking a step back, uh, taking a deep breath, uh, coming back to what Kaliva said, I think earlier, with regards to the threefold nature of work and really being much more aware of this, uh, you know, looking at my calendar two hours until my next meeting, is the right thing right now for me to clarify my work or is it doing something from my lists? And uh, really making that a uh, very conscious decisions, uh, decision as opposed to, to, um, to doing uh, instinctively something that I, oh, I need to do that or I need to get that one done. Mm -hmm. Uh, so so um, for me, it was simply a change of ways to work. Look at my calendar first, then decide based on the threefold nature of work what to, to get done. And I just also to chime in there to make good decisions of, about what to do and what not to do when you want to get work off your lists or your calendar. Uh, don't underestimate the limiting criteria. I, I did it many, many years myself and... Uh, just to just to just ask yourself, okay, where am I now? Uh, okay, am I at home, probably, <laughs> or uh, out and about, or uh, and then like, okay, how much time do I have to the next appointment? And how is my energy level now? Uh, did I sleep? Maybe I didn't sleep that well. Maybe I'm about to fall into corona coma. Yeah, staying too much at home and. And then pay, pay attention to that. It's, it's not a smart pick to then take this an, an, an action that demands a lot of fresh energy. Just to pick an action that's uh, don't take so much energy. And and the last, what what does your intuition say? That's or if you have your focuses horizon set up, what's the smartest choice 
uh, taking all your uh, focus or horizons into con consideration. So limiting criteria is, is really, it's really powerful. And please uh, uh, remember using it while deciding what to do and what not to do during the day. So you can have this wonderful feeling that the thing you're doing now is the most important thing. Thank you. Uh, do you have any other daily habits? Is also a part of, of the questions here from from Tillman. What what are your uh, GTD habits that you haven't mentioned already? Well, I don't know if it's unrelated to GCD. I guess it, it's pretty much related to GCD. But but one way that I uh, just today discussed with a coaching client on how to better keep track of my different inboxes, uh, I have set it up in the, in the laziest possible way. So when I show up at, at the office here, um, I, I have a series of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven programs that I instinctively open. And one of them is a browser. And there are uh, three tabs that I open, one being a folder with all the digital inboxes. So for me, this is a simple way to, instead of having a checklist that I would go through, uh, it's simply a, a non-brainer for me to just click them, open it all up. Um, and then walk through them. So these are, you know, uh, check in on the CRM system, check in on the uh, analytics of the website, check in on how the ads are doing, uh, simple things that I want to do on a daily basis. And also, you know, different tools that we use for communication, like Slack, like Twist. Um, I have one of my inboxes is, is recording stuff on my uh, Apple Watch uh, on the way to work. Stuff always shows up. So that goes into the Memos app. And I make sure to open the memos app as soon as I get to the office so I can get those out of that inbox into my system uh, as part of my morning routine. So I don't know if that was specifically what you were looking for, but uh, that's, uh, that was at least a couple of daily habits from, from my end. And if you like have difficulties in, in, uh, in uh, establishing uh, some daily habits, maybe a, daily checkli a checklist for daily routines you want to establish can, can mm -hmm. be helpful for you. Just to, uh, and, and you know, brushing the, our teeth, we, most of us at least have established and we do it every morning, every evening. So we don't need, <laughs> we don't Stefan need. Stefan shook, shook his head now. So I don't know. Yeah. And he drinks Thank his Zoom and Pepsi no. Max or something. <laughs> <laughs> and it, uh, no, most of us uh, uh, established this. And so we don't need a reminder for it anymore. And uh, lots of the things that Lars talked about, he's done it so many times that it's become second nature for him, just as brushing teeth. But until then, and you know, you know, the thing about learning and implementing GTD is like, it's, it's an art of how we do our work. And, and actually, we, we have practiced this all our life and we have established our own routines, very strong routines that we more or less uh, consciously do. And then we learn GTD and very often, at least that's one of the hundred mistakes I did when I started learning GTD, that I, I mixed up both those things. And I thought this was GTD. It actually was a big mm. porridge of my old, not so good routines and GTD, <laughs> yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so, um, so uh, uh, a very good help can actually be to have this checklist. When you come to your office, if you have anything in your bag, empty it into your inbox right away. Open your calendar, check out the hard landscape for the day, open your next actions list, check out anything. You know, uh, when you start to wake up, maybe 10 or 11 in the morning, start clarifying and organizing when you're fit, you know, or not, not fit, and when you are like, yeah, you know. <laughs> the brain works. <laughs> Like you come in at the clock in the morning, so you're half asleep. It's not maybe it's not that smart to make uh, executive decisions. So um, Morton tipped me about this uh, having a daily checklist, and it really helps me a lot to mm. because I'm very very forgetful. So that's for me. And what what I will do now is that I will I will post uh, or I will put on Dropbox and I put a link in the, in the chat eventually of 
uh, a template of, uh, and I'm sorry guys, it's in Norwegian only, so those of you who don't understand Norwegian or don't want to care about Norwegian, you, you are in, in bad luck, but I will post it in the, in the chat, a link to that checklist, which is a suggestion I use when I do my coaching clients when they, I, I ask them about this. So maybe you, you find some value in this checklist. Before we move on, I, I really want to point out one more thing. We'll be talking about routines and GTD habits and stuff, and we haven't mentioned the weekly review at all. And uh, this, is, this is maybe the, of course, you've heard it 100 times, but uh, we need to state this uh, so many times. Doing the weekly review at least once a week, that's the single most important GTD habit in order to make this stick and in order to make get you up on a on a very high level. So so um, I'm sure I'm sure you heard that th thousand times. But uh, first first thing, schedule out your weekly review in the calendar so you have it at least once a week. And train that muscle. I mean, perfect is boring. Just do some review, but uh, uh, encourage yourself to to expand your knowledge about the weekly review. There's so much cool stuff to uh, to uh, uh, discover there. And talking about the daily firefighting, I mean, if you do your weekly review, I uh, I think I, I reviewed some of the questions that had come in before this meeting, and for me at least, when I when I read through those questions, I thought like, okay, weekly review, yeah, weekly review, yeah, weekly review, yeah. If you do the weekly review, then. So um, do yourself a favor and do the weekly review. Do yourself a favor and do the weekly review, do yourself. And, and now going directly for the heavy uh, weekly review stuff to and uh, all-time favorite, uh, what's the easiest and simplest uh, GTD app for iPhone? There isn't such a thing. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> just, just find what works for you. What about uh, using Apple Notes? Or yeah, I was going to say reminders app. Yeah. Reminders, mm. Apple Notes, as long as it works for you. Mm. But, but I, I just want to, this is one of the pet peeves of me and the David Allen Academy is that <clears throat> don't look at uh, the tool, look at your habits. Build your GTD habits, whatever tool you use, if it's paper or map, it doesn't matter. But you really, you really, really, you need to build the habits before you can, you know, uh, start really focusing on, on, on an app. So that's my really two cents worth. Don't, don't, don't become the, the person who is watching productivity pornography. And they get more um, um, focused on the tool than the practice. Okay. Um, just a follow up from Tillman uh, to you, Warden, uh, about your habit with the audiobooks. Uh, how do you take notes when you're listening to an audiobook while shaving? And my answer is I don't. <laughs> But I, I, in all honesty, my my trusted um, um, wallet uh, is always with me in my pants in my my pocket. If I really wanted and needed to take notes, it will go in into this. It has a pen and paper. You can write it down really quickly. And I'm sure someone will post a link to where you can buy this at some point in this conversation but you can this is where i take all my notes but basically i don't take notes i mean uh, it's a really powerful uh, um, uh powerful best practice to um to put pen and paper if you like to collect on pen and paper whenever you are spending more than five minutes 
So I, in my bathroom, I have a pen and paper. Here's, here's my breakfast table. I got pen and paper here. I even have aqua notes in my <laughs> shower. <laughs> maybe that's a bit too much. I mean, I've taken notes there four times, maybe the last one and a half years. So, but uh, sometimes you get ideas in the shower as well. So aqua notes is like a way to take notes in the, that's maybe more the, of the nerdy thing. But I mean, having a collection tool with you uh, at, at the bed, pen and paper at bed. I mean, you can, you can earn thousands of kroner with this, this simple thing here. If you like, grab your notes. Oh, I just grabbed the note here. I have to put it in my inbox. So, so um, having collection tools where you are, or if you are in a cafe, grab out pen and paper and put it in front of you. So you can like uh, capture any note that comes to your mind. And I've, I've posted myaquanotes.com and for those of you who want to capture in the shower. And I remember I, I am also guilty of having this. And maybe I, I tipped to Kaliva at some point off for this. Um, but I remember when I was 50 years old, which is seven years ago, I had uh, Todd Brown and his wife Deborah, which uh, Todd is uh, the master trainer of the uh, Next Action Associate in London. They, they come to visit me on, on my 50th birthday together with David Allen and, and Kathleen Allen. And I remember um, David Allen, sorry, uh, Todd Brown, uh, we were talking about something in the living room. His wife goes to the toilet and she comes out and she, she says to me, Martin, uh, sorry, Todd, uh, Martin is even more a GTD nerd than you are. He has notes in his shower. And that's aqua notes for you. <laughs> so it's a kind of funny anecdote for those of you, but I've, I've, I've stopped using that now because my, my head is empty at most times. But when you're trying to build a habit, capturing tools around you is the most important thing. Have a pen and paper next to your bed. Have a, you know, um, somewhere to capture while you are on the go. When you go into the shop and you suddenly realize I forgot to respond to that email, where do you put that? You don't keep it in your brain because that's not working. So where do you put that? Where do you take notes whenever you can and need to take notes? A lot of us are like trying to get some exercise now and when we're in lockdown going out jogging and maybe very often the ideas come while you're jogging. So having, uh, I, I'm, I'm using a, a, a voice recorder a lot. I love that to record, also for it to record composition ideas for my musical uh, activities, but also simple, simple ideas um, that, and, then, and a voice recorder is just, is just recording your stuff. If you like take up your uh, smartphone and try to open the app and ping, 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 there are 10 more messages and you are f f forgotten your idea before you are recording it. So uh, for me, a voice recorder is a very, very good capture tool. Thank you. Uh, the next question, question is from uh, uh, David uh, Elson. Uh, you can unmute yourself uh, if you like to to ask the question yourself. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Well, um, when I've written down all my next action on my next action lists, uh, I almost cannot get started just working on them and just go to get execute, execute, execute. But that's sometimes I just forget everything else around me, like having coffee with colleagues or taking care of the dishes at home. So <laughs> I, would, I would like to hear if any of you, uh, you guys have any good uh, recommendations for me, uh, how to handle this. Would you like to start with that? I, I, I can. Um... And you know that your your symptoms are very classical. Is that when you are trying to do clarify and organize, you get dragged into, or you're pulled into by by the the sheer nature of oh I know how to fix this I know how to make this, and that is maybe um, one of the the problems most people who try to learn GTD have is that you you are you're addicted to 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 next actions to whatever you decided to do you can do. And uh, to put that satisfactions 
off a little just five minutes until you finish clarify and organize is going to help you so um my my um, suggestion is just over time build the habit and and it is a habit because some of you when you I don't know if you've ever been there. I'm sure everybody who's done GTD, raise your hand if, you, if, you, if you've done this. If you've been clarifying organizing and you suddenly feel that I really, really, really need to respond to this email because I know how to and it feels good to me right in this moment. If you, <laughs> you're guilty of that, then yeah. Okay, so everybody knows this. So lower your shoulders. This is um, um, my idea here is that uh, not my idea, but my, my point is, is that, uh, I don't know if, you, have you ever heard about the, the, the marshmallow experiment? The marshmallow experiment is, is uh, it's a little, um, I, I understand, disputed experiment, but sometimes in the 70s, 80s, this is an experiment done on, on very young children, four to, I think, four to eight years old children who was asked to do the following experiment and, and see and, and then, then they follow these uh, small toddlers or children after the fact and that, but the, the question they got is that okay i have t two marshmallows here you can have one now and i'll come back if you don't eat the first one in 10 minutes i'll come back with the second one and you'll have both so you can have one marshmallow right now or you can wait 10 minutes and you'll get two and the, the, the idea here is that if you can um, uh, delay the satisfaction in life for having the second marshmallow, you actually would have a better life. You would have a better career you, because you are, are able to delay the satisfaction. So if, and, and, and they, you know, they tell people that who are delaying the second marshmallow are actually doing better in life. So, so if you want to do better at GTD, at least you have to delay the the dissatisfaction of doing the next action until you're finished clarifying and organizing. So I don't know if that makes sense to you, but hey, uh, two cents worth. <laughs> I think I think one of the, uh, yeah, Lars, please go. <laughs> no, uh, just a reflection on, on this. Um, uh, just uh, as, as a positive perspective on this is that, you know, it, it looks like you're really good at finding next actions. And it really shows that you gain a lot of value from facing a, a, a probably a complex world and, and breaking that down. And that's going really well for you. So, so certainly there is, uh, they, we can all improve and, and maybe taking a step back and being more, you know, big picture about what's the right thing to do in any given time would be uh, even better, but, but just, uh, just also take that as a positive thing. You know, you're getting stuff done. That's cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Lars. <laughs> I think I think um, uh, this this whole idea of first clarifying and organizing your stuff, and to stay in that focus and really clarify. Don't jump from capture to organize, but really clarify what is this? Is this actionable or not? If yes, what's the next action? Can I do it in less than two minutes? Am I the right person to do it? If 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 uh, if yes, then uh, put it on some list. And what's the desired outcome? And stay in this focus for maybe maybe twenty minutes, maybe half an hour, maybe longer if you if you feel for it. And then afterwards, go into the other focus of doing, knocking off things from your list. Your it, second marshmallow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, this is one of the great things about this is you don't multitask you st you you, you allow your brain to stay in one focus first it's like you, you you use one muscle of your brain for half an hour and then this muscle get maybe a bit uh, exhausted you switch and you go to the other muscle and you check 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 down and Another great thing there about multitasking, if you have like your context set up, you can knock off all your calls, you stay in call modus, you can knock off all your computer things, you stay in computer modus. So you, so you, you know, we all know that multitasking is taking a lot of energy. And, and, and if, you, if you pay attention to threefold natural work, define your work, do predefined work, like, 
you're gonna you're gonna have very very high you're gonna work on a much higher efficiency and i i've been there a thousand times that uh, i start clarifying oh shit i'm gonna do this and for me very often this is a symptom that i haven't done my weekly review because i don't trust my system anymore so i'm starting doing right away so maybe this if you if you just if you start clarifying and you if you have difficulty in staying there and feel you have to go to executing and doing stuff maybe that is a symptom that you haven't done your weekly review good enough so maybe you should go off and do that um Jens, I have just, um, I don't know if I can, but if we have time to play just one minute video of Dr. Theo Campanolle. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure how this is going to work. I'm going to try and play this if it's, if it's okay with you. And he talks about multitasking. And the human thinking brain can not multitask. I would like to repeat this another 50 times in those 20 minutes. Your thinking brain cannot multitask. Not even the thinking brain of women. It cannot <laughs> multitask. Women have just a human brain like all of us. It cannot multitask. So that's very important. And then when you try to multitask, it makes you pathetically inefficient, ridiculously inefficient, so inefficient that in those modern days I can't express how inefficient it is without swearing. It makes you fucking inefficient. <laughs> and I'll never use that word again. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but... Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and the only person who can say this in the world is um, um, Theo, because he's, he's old enough to get away with it. <laughs> so, okay. thank, thank you, Morten, for, for bringing back uh, memories from the uh, GGD Summit. Uh, the next uh, question is uh, from uh, Johanna. Welcome to unmute yourself. Okay, I did. So I guess most of you have families and kids in different ages. How do you use GTD with your family and do your family members trust your system? And uh, I, I think we'll start with uh, Yuka. And uh, please remember <laughs> uh, who's asking. <laughs> Okay, uh, so so basically, um, it's exactly the same with your family as it is with your colleagues. If your colleagues do not practice GDD, you can't force them to practice GDD, and you can't either force your family to do GDD. You can only uh, try to learn by example uh, or lead by example. Uh, Oftentimes that can lead to the fact that the person who does GTD in the family ends up holding most of the reins uh, in regards to the everyday aspects of the family life. Uh, then again, if the person who holds, um, person who, who practices GTD can use GTD to his or her own advantage when, um, let's say manipulating the other members of the family to do the chores uh, he or she does not want to do herself. So you can delegate the tasks you're not so willing to do yourself. Um, I haven't cleaned the house in, um, I would say, 10 years. Um, I have kids who do that for me. It, it's a delegated task. I know this is uh, not purely GTD, but it, it's it's something you can um, delegate forward and and um, people either get the thing that they've been delegated something or they don't. But the end result is that the one using GTD still gets the benefits of the using the GTD in a family setting. I remember um, I once had a stepson. He was around uh, seven years old. And uh, when his mother said, go and clean your room, he totally broke out. I, said, I don't want to clean my room. And, and it started, uh, yeah, not a fight, but they were not 
happy with each other. So um, I try this very, very easy example, like when um, did this uh, small experiment to just go into his room with him and and like yeah we we try to do this this um try to do d to d in a very simple way so we like we put all his toys in a huge pile in the middle of the room and and i didn't say clean the room i just took took out one toy and said okay you want to keep this or you want to give it away to the neighbors or should we throw it away and okay now i give it to the neighbors yeah next toy this one you want to keep it yeah keep it so we like took this decision process with with all of his toys we ended up with three piles and then okay we went to the neighbors with the one pile threw away the other pile and and the third like he went and decided okay where does this belong where does this belong and then he could then he uh, he was seven uh, seven years old and he he, he um, borrowed my my uh, label uh, writer and had really much fun on like printing out his own labels and putting it putting it um but um, actually with this method focusing on one thing at a time he actually um he actually stayed focused for over two hours uh, and the, the room was squeaky clean afterwards so so uh, but but that, i mean the same thing for us i mean if 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 someone tells us um go and hire an, a new staff member uh it was uh, yeah but make a call to set up a meeting with the hr that we can do that so so focus on one thing i have a four-year-old daughter now and uh, i don't do this with her i rather ask okay where where does where does um uh, the, the the doll uh, rest where does she go uh, rest when she's not playing as yeah, she rests in that cupboard okay so let's put her there okay this, this, uh, all the Lego toys, where do they rest when you don't play with them? But they also have to rest. Yeah, of course, yeah. They rest in this cupboard. Okay, we put all the Lego in there. Yeah, so, and then when we clean up the room, we, we rather say, okay, let's, let's go and uh, take uh, this doll and, and I just ask her, okay, where does the doll belong? Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, or this, that cupboard. And so just try to, translate gtd language to the language of your kids how your kids talk i mean when you get when we get questions about how how uh, how actually did i um uh, got produced mama and dad how uh, you know and we like go uh, how should i answer so of course there's a grown up answer to it and there's a kids answer to it so we have to like find a kids answer to gtd and we know our kids ourselves so we have to like to find this good translation like the same way as we find translation for any other questions and maybe that's a good time to 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 just quickly plug gtd for teens a uh, very good book for those of you who are also not teenagers i don't think that's the the most of people on this this call uh but it really is a good book really good perspectives um I, one of the things that still stands out to me is the transition of uh, areas of uh, focus and accountability from a parent to a child, uh, for example. Really interesting to see it, uh, see that um, transition taking place from a, from a GCD perspective. Um, and I can echo Kaliva's uh, experience with, with uh, capturing as a first step of cleaning up. Uh, my two and four year olds, they, 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 they are also, also not big fans of, of cleaning up, but you know, they can take all the toys that are on the ground and all over the, the place and place them on one big table. That's even fun for the two-year-old. Uh, the clarifying part, uh, that's more for the four-year-old. The two-year-old is more of maybe making another new mess. But <laughs> as a starting point, that's uh, that's one place to go. And just from a family's perspective, uh, my wife and, and I, we have a weekly review together Monday evening go through the agenda list, look at the calendar, see if there's anything we need to repair. So uh, that can certainly also be um, beneficial. And last tip, uh, GCD for Families. We actually did a podcast recording on that a while back. Uh, so I will throw that in uh, the chat now as well. Yeah, uh, then... Uh Another question is with uh, how often do you empty your fiscal inbox? Every day. I try at least every day. Every day. 
I, this Every is my time. physical inbox now. I haven't f succeeded today, unfortunately, but I did my best. I did. I'm going to continue tomorrow. I would, on my own part, it's actually the first thing I do when I enter my office in the morning. I start by cleaning my physical inbox. Great. Uh, then uh, there's a question for, from uh, Oscar, uh, especially to, uh, to Kaliva. Uh, about where do you keep your musical ideas for future reference? Um, so the question is, where do I keep my mus musical ideas for future reference? Is that the question, Oscar? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, just, just to uh, so, so now we're into organize the, the third step of GDD, and uh, for me, uh, ideas for future reference is. It's what it is, it's, it's reference. So it belongs in my reference system. And, uh, and uh, I, uh, I, I, yeah, well, I sold my soul to Steve Jobs for many years ago. So I'm a Mac guy and I love to have it like digitally. I also have a paper, a paper system, uh, like I showed you and a paper reference system, but my musical ideas are very much uh, from my voice recorder uh, because I'm, a, I'm talking about this Kairos survey, I'm a very audible guy, so I like to talk and, and record and listen back. So um, um, my digital reference system um, lives in Evernote and in, in, uh, and in Dropbox. And in Evernote, I have a very, very good, uh, very big notebook called the Composition Ideas. And this book is stuffed with tons of... Uh, ideas and voice recordings and uh, yeah now i have um, have one um, uh, one project which is finishing a potential opening uh, composition for my next record and i'm about to start a composition phase for my next record and the next action is to into is to import one of those 100 ideas into ableton live which is my composition program i used at, at the moment and uh, so, and yeah, so 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 that's that's the next action, and 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 the and the composition ideas live there in, in Evernote, and I can browse through them if I want to, and I keep on capturing and adding to them. So I'm yeah, it's it's just part of my reference system. Is that answer to your question, Oscar? Yeah, it was a good answer. I was just uh, thinking about the sheet music as well. If you use the kind of sheet music program. Yeah. Sheet, sheet music, just the same thing. I have a, I have a, a file folder uh, for my uh, for for my composition sheet music music uh, composition ideas and compo compositions that are mm -hmm. under um, developing and the finished compositions of mine that lives in a in a folder in my reference system. It's actually just in my Finder in in um, in um, uh, on my Mac, which is on my Dropbox, and uh, and then for all the bands I play in, I have I don't know five or six active bands at the moment. They are in another uh, part of my reference system. When all the the notes, the sheet music for any of these bands are re uh, are stored at the numeric system, I have uh, so I can find them very easily and print out whatever I need. But I try to keep it uh, paperless and I try to learn it uh, by heart so I don't have to read any sheet music when I go on stage because I want to have it, um, uh, uh, what do you say? I learn by heart, don't, but I can print it if I need to, but uh, yeah. And I also have a paper reference for printed sheet music as well as part of my paper reference. It just lives in my general reference system. Okay, okay. Oscar, yeah? yeah. Um, that's uh, the last uh, question we have time for uh, today. Uh, I've been totally blown away by this uh, meetup. It it's fully exceeds my expectation, and uh, they were high, as you know. Um, so uh, I I'll, would say thank you to. Uh, 
all of you and uh, last uh, we can do it uh, as uh, in the podcast uh, where you take us out and uh, say what's needed thank let's, you uh, let's let's give that a try uh, strange that the, the request is not coming from morton so i just had to uh, to adjust to that one <laughs> no first of all uh, thank you Jens, uh, so much for managing this call today um, i really uh, appreciate that um and for everyone in the nordics uh, we always recommend to go to gtd nordic like morton said in the beginning gtdnordic.com and you will find all the country websites there each of those will have articles about GTD, newsletter, links to the meetups, uh, and more information about all the virtual offerings that Morton mentioned in the beginning. So certainly uh, go to go to that one and um, have a look. And um, yeah, thanks so much for joining everyone and um, great questions and looking forward to, to doing this uh, once again sometime in the future. Thank you so, thank so much, uh, everybody. And uh, feel free to at least email me and I'm sure also all the other coaches. Uh, we are just a very short click away. So, um, so stay in touch with, with us. We are happy to stay in touch with you guys and, and uh, so grateful for you chiming in. And um, one, thank you for the wonderful questions and for the participation. Mm. Yeah, just the same for me is that it's been it's been a blast, and I really understand most of you guys are really GTD nerds. So thank you for hanging on. There's like 36 people still online when we are closing this. So thank you so much, and uh, and uh, chiming with uh, with Carly or send us an email uh, if you need a question, have a question if we can help you. And thank you so much for loving GTD almost as much as we do. <laughs> Not. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. bye. Take care. Bye.